Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here, the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We begin with a 10-minute meditation before the actual service at 7. So I invite you to take this time to join me in just getting still. And wherever you are seated right now, ideally you're seated in a way where you can allow yourself to relax, but where your spine is still erect and often if you just slightly tilt forward a little bit that takes pressure off the tailbone so you can sit comfortably but with the spine erect like that you're less likely to nod off just close your eyes And this is an opportunity for us to just come into the now moment, the present moment. And we do a form of Vipassana meditation where we focus on the breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Noticing the expansion with the in-breath. Just seeing how the lungs deflate as we breathe out. It may help you to just silently say to yourself, breathing in with the in-breath, breathing out with the out-breath. And this is a wonderful opportunity to cultivate that sense of non-judgmental mindfulness if your mind wanders, when you catch yourself in a thought, noticing a feeling, listening to a sound, just notice, be aware of where the mind has gone. Absolutely try not to judge it, or if you notice yourself judging yourself for your mind wandering, notice, oh, judgment, judgment is coming up. Just be aware of that for a moment. And then very gently bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your body, becoming aware of your surroundings. You can take a nice deep breath. As we release it, maybe shrug our shoulders, wiggle our fingers and toes. And as you feel ready, just open your eyes. So once again, welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service. Special welcome to those of you who joined us during the meditation. We're so glad you're on with us via Facebook Live or Zoom. Let's begin our service as we always do with our opening chant led by the wonderful Sam Krieger and Diane Vincent. Thank you, Diane and Sam. Ah, so let's join together in prayer. Absolutely feeling that vibration of God that is in this place, that is in every place, because truly, God is the only power. It is the one life, the one vibration of infinite love, infinite intelligence, creativity, goodness in every way can be known and felt and realized. That is the nature of this one presence of God that animates everything in creation, including each and every one of us gathered here for this service this evening. I know that we all exist as emanations of the life of God. And we come together to know that truth of God's nature in us at some deeper level. I know absolutely that God is present unfolding through every part of our time together. That it is that vibration of God's love that moves through everyone who is of service, that allows us to feel interconnected. It is that love and creativity and inspiration of God that flows through Sam and Diane this evening, uplifting us with their music. I know that every thought that is expressed through me is one that was originated in divine mind. And that it is that message of God that I open myself to, to share this evening. And that all of us, including myself, are here to hear it and be uplifted by it. And so I give thanks right now for all the blessings I know we receive through this time together, knowing it's all God unfolding and all of us awakening to its essence in and around us. And so in gratitude, I release this word, knowing our time is blessed. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. 
And so please join me now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Diane and Sam. Well, I'm looking at this idea of what's the payoff tonight, and I just experienced it. I, I got to be included in Diane's song. <laughs> well, okay, I've gotten what I needed out of this evening. Have a good one. <laughs> so, no, I am looking at this idea of what's the payoff, and I know that question can sound really egocentric, especially when it's asked, well, what's the payoff for me? Because I think we associate it, especially when it's with that kind of a posture, with a mindset that is focused on you know, good for oneself with complete disregard for anyone else. Yet the truth is, the impulse of God's nature in us all is to continually find new ways to experience and express its goodness through us. 
So following the impulse of God in us to experience, express itself through us will always result in some kind of payoff, in some kind of greater good. At the highest level, you know, that payoff that the universe seeks through all of us is for some new or expanded experience of goodness that is for the good of all. You know, because God's impulse for good is not for some and for others. It's for its goodness to be felt and realized and experienced in all parts of itself. And since it lies in through and as all creation, it would only want good that would be for the good of all. So examples of the payoff would be our desire for more love in our lives that opens our hearts to greater love for all where we might have been closed off, that there's a payoff for us, but there's also payoff for others as we become more open to love and more loving. Our desire for greater self-expression in a career results in us manifesting work where we feel more fulfilled, so that's a payoff for us, but also when we're more fulfilled, then you know we're there more joyfully and lovingly giving of our talents to others our desire for greater health you know, motivates us to manifest a greater experience of health and vitality, overcoming health challenges or unhealthy habits, and that enables us to show up in a healthier way in the world. So seen in this context, I think we could all see that asking the question, what's the payoff, can be helpful and it's particularly helpful when we're feeling the impulse of spirit for a new or expanded form, a new experience, uh, experience of itself, a new way of expressing itself through us. And we perceive a way for that to happen, but somehow we just can't seem to bring it forth into expression we see that possibility of a more loving relationship, of healing a relationship, and thereby experiencing more love. Maybe we see the possibility of taking on a new role in a career that you know, we feel would you know, be more fulfilling to us. Or Perhaps we have that impulse of a way to fulfill God's love and giving of ourselves of becoming a parent. Maybe we see the possibility of greater health for ourselves by committing to some kind of a regime, be it you know, different kind of diet, exercise, combination of that, changing certain life habits. So the human pathway for that greater good is revealed to us, but somehow we just can't get motivated, or we just can't stick to it, or we get close. You know, we take the steps, and maybe even the experience comes into our life, but somehow we sabotage ourselves. You know, we, we just can't seem to get there or if we get very close, then we, we do something that we lose it all. And His Holiness the Dalai Lama, in the uh, book where he was interviewed by psychologists in The Art of Happiness, he talks about this issue of how sometimes we just can't seem to keep ourselves on track for greater long-term happiness. And Usually, it's because we haven't really sensed at a very deep level the payoff of that experience. We haven't allowed ourselves or, or our sense of the greater good, the, the greater health, the greater fulfillment isn't strong enough and it can be overridden by our current habits that take over rather than us moving down the pathway for some greater good. And so when we find ourselves in that kind of situation, I don't know about you, I find myself 
in that kind of situation quite frequently, more frequently than I'd like to admit. I go back to a point that I made in my talk last week that I've made many times and that you will hear us make over and over again in our, the classes that we teach, that our founder, Ernest Holmes, when he talked about working with the tools that we work with like affirmation or our affirmative prayer style of spiritual mind treatment, he kept reiterating it's not the words themselves, it's the feeling that we put into the words. It's, you know, like I, I've said before, just saying, I'm an expression of love, I'm an expression of love. Fine, you know, maybe at some way, at point, that'll work its way into our subconscious, but feeling I'm an expression of love and feeling that love and sharing that love as I'm saying that, that is what helps us to shift from those places where we don't really accept those as possibilities, those experiences as possibilities for ourselves into moving into that greater good. It's being in the felt reality when you really feel what it's gonna feel like when you're at, maybe if your goal is for some, some ideal weight, you know, either gaining or losing, whatever. If you feel that, if you feel how good that feels, the greater health, and you keep turning to that feeling, it makes it a lot easier to stay motivated and stay on track to manifest that goal. I know when I'm working with people who understand on some level the importance of forgiveness, but they're really having for, trouble forgiving someone, or for myself, when I'm in that position, what I work on is I, I tell people, okay, so imagine yourself in that place where this person that you're having trouble forgiving, however they're behaving, it has no impact on you. Imagine that you are at peace. They can be whoever they are. You know, and from that place, maybe you are able to see a pathway to heal whatever disagreement there was. Or you might be clear that this person's in a place that it's not healthy for me to interact with them, whatever. But no matter what, you're at peace. You feel your power. You are not feeling off-center and constantly going to that place, which is not a happy place of resentment over and over again, rehashing the pain of the experience. Imagine yourself being free of that. When we can get to that place of really feeling that, it really becomes a lot easier to let go of the resentments, to absolutely know that we're blessing ourselves. There's a payoff, and guess what? We show up in a bigger, more loving way in the world when we are free of those patterns of unforgiveness. You know, when we can sense the greater good that's stronger than any fears or insecurities or feelings, you know, that we can't have this, the limiting belief patterns, the limiting uh, ways that, uh, mindsets that hold us back, just dissolve and we can move forward into greater good. Now, the other way that this question, what's the payoff, is helpful, is to look at sometimes we feel um, reluctant to move in the direction of the greater good, because as we envision that greater good for ourselves, we can also feel a payoff of not moving forward toward that greater good. And it may be on a very you know, subjective level that we're not consciously realizing it, but we may be, be clinging to our current conditions, even the negative ones, due to the payoffs that they provide. I had a client who started coming to me to do some work in consciousness after she attended a workshop where it was a goal-setting workshop and she was seeking to manifest a new relationship a few years after her husband had passed away. And, you know, she was still young. She felt she had really gone through the grieving process. She really felt like she wanted to have someone else in her life. 
And the facilitator of the workshop asked her, so why are you afraid of having that new relationship? And she said, her initial response was, I'm not afraid, I just said that's what I want. But as they explored that you know, question at a deeper level, she realized that there was a level of fear that the next relationship wouldn't measure up to the one she had before with her first husband. She also discovered fears around not wanting to be hurt or disappointed if she put herself out there and she didn't find someone. She also was afraid, and I think this was a very strong one, that she would lose her sense of connection to her late husband if she got into a new loving relationship. People living with long-term or serious ailments sometimes discover that they get attached to the attention. You know, it, it's just something to look at. Without judgment, this is normal human nature. There are those that I've heard that they realized they were afraid that if they got better, that all of a sudden they wouldn't have that ailment as an excuse of why they couldn't do this or do that. They might disappoint others. They might not live up to others' expectations. I had a client who discovered his fear of stepping into a more fulfilling and lucrative career because when he saw himself doing that, he liked the idea of there were people in his family that he wanted to be able to help, but then he realized he might be making more money, but he might not have enough to help everyone that he would like to help. You know, getting still and inquiring about what are some of these payoffs that we're experiencing now of not manifesting our goals that makes us feel comfortable. They make us feel comfortable being where we are and not moving out of our comfort zone. It helps us to shed light on them because then we can do the work in consciousness to get beyond them. You know, we can work with affirmations and calling forth the vibration of an experience for the greater good that we say we want, but also, you know, that doesn't exclude some of the things that we're experiencing today that we appreciate. You know, that client who had fears about, you know, stepping into that more lucrative job, making more money, well, we had, we worked on his consciousness in terms of feeling good about the ways he was giving today, knowing that he couldn't just give to everyone, but for those he could give to in whatever way he could, that that felt good. You know, so we worked on the idea that he was a channel of God's good, but he wasn't anyone's source, that everyone has their own connection to God. And so that made him feel more comfortable with the idea, well, I can't give to everyone. Then we moved him into imagining himself in that place where he could give more expansively, but yet again, not necessarily to everyone. When he accepted that he could feel that sense of feeling good about what he had to give and not feel um, bad about what he didn't have to share, knowing that others were connected to God and would find their good in their own way, then he could move forward and accept that greater good. You know, the client who was, you know, had the fears about the relationship. You know, we just worked on her imagining herself in that loving relationship that it felt new, it felt expansive, it wasn't the same as anything before, but it was wonderful in its own way, and yet that she could still feel the connection with what she had before, feel appreciative of it, and we got to see how she was able to do that with so many other things. So of course she was going to still continue to feel the love and connection with her husband who had deceased while being in a new relationship. So asking ourselves, what's the payoff in the sense of what aspect of God am I opening to experiencing more expansively and really really affirming it and feeling it as already accomplished, and also inquiring about what's the payoff that might be holding me back so we can open 
to the fulfillment of the greater good that doesn't exclude any of the good that we're experiencing today allows us to step into the payoff of ever greater good, the kingdom of God, that God seeks to manifest through us, that God holds for all of us. So let's take a moment to turn our attention inward. And I invite you to call to mind some, some experience of greater good that you seek to manifest, but maybe where you feel challenged in realizing it, in staying committed to it. And whatever that is, imagine yourself right now with that greater good being fully manifest. Allow yourself to feel it, to sense it. You're activating the vibration of God's goodness that will bring forth that greater experience. Just feel it is already done. And know that it's out of this felt reality, this vibration, that the greater good comes into being. Let that periodically going back and feeling it be your anchor to keep returning to it so you remain on track in manifesting it. And now ask yourself if, there, if there's anything you fear about this greater good being realized, any payoff of things being the way they are now. Maybe you'll have to take on greater responsibility. You won't be able to make excuses based on your current circumstances. It might be too hard, whatever. Being aware that this block is there, go back to that imagined reality of the greater good being manifest and feel yourself being there with a sense of wholeness, a sense of well-being about yourself, a sense of peace, just realize that your fears were completely unnecessary. And know that this greater sense of good without any negative impact to yourself or others is yours to keep turning back to, to lead you into its perfect manifestation. And so from this place, please join me in knowing the truth. For some of these challenges that we can encounter along this human journey, knowing that no matter what, the goodness of God lies at the center of all creation the center of each and every one of us. Let us know together that where there's any experience of discomfort around change, where it's painful to be releasing something from this human experience, that the nature of God out of which any good has ever come is changeless, birthless, deathless. It is always there at the center of each and every one of us to be realized in some new way. And those whom we've loved who are no longer with us are always connected with us in spirit. Let us absolutely know that where there's any challenge around health and well-being, that the nature of God that lies in all of us is absolute perfection, wholeness, vitality. And so these human experiences are temporary. 
They come out of our forgetfulness of our true divine nature. And as we remember that truth, the pathways back into the state of well-being for those who are not experiencing right now is revealed. Let us join in knowing that that vibration of God is one that gives of itself unto itself incessantly and that we all have particular gifts and talents and ways of sharing that goodness of God. And as we know that we all are valued, all are here to give of those God-given talents. We're all brought to those perfect places to share our divine nature where the way we do so is appreciated and valued and we are fulfilled. Let us remember that this one life is infinite. It knows nothing of lack and limitation and where there are human experiences of lack going on. Let us remember that vibration of God is right there to dissolve those experiences and to reveal that capacity through which we are able to more generously give of ourselves and take in and be sourced and supplied because God is the source and supply for all of us. We are all divinely prospered as we open to that vibration of God's abundance and we are all centers through which generosity can be expressed. And we remember that that nature of the divine is pure love, unconditional love. And as we open to its impulse, we see a greater capacity to give that love and to take it in, to have greater love for ourselves and all beings everywhere, no matter how they may be appearing in this moment. And knowing that impulse of love is for greater good always, let us honor that impulse by setting our own individual intentions in silence. So whatever these intentions may be, whether it's for greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us absolutely know that it is God that lies at the center of these intentions. It is the impulse for more of itself to be known and felt and realized. And as we know that God is right there, we see greater good being made manifest. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth, and it's knowing this and feeling so grateful for this knowingness that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. Amen. So this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. Remember that uh, ways you can give uh, your tithes are you can first uh, call into church afterwards if you would like to do your donation over the phone. 
with um, a credit or a debit card. And so that's 818-762-7566. You can uh, also uh, do your donation online, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that takes you straight to our donation page where you can do your donation uh, one time or set up recurring donations. Uh, you can also text the word give, and I'm sorry I don't have the phone number in front of me, 818, I know it's 457 3419. <laughs> Yay, Doreen, thank you so much. <laughs> oh boy. Well, the payoff to that is I got to have a special interaction with Doreen, who has to stay behind the console all night. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, let's hold our hands to our hearts as we set our intentions for our offerings. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. So as we bring our service to a close, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's of service this evening. Uh, let me start out with those of you who are out in Zoom land. Um, thank you to practitioners Gail Pallott and Dean Regan for holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, to our wonderful Zoom team, Alma Alvarez, uh, Barbara Berg, and Ray Regan. Thank you for your support. And on Facebook Live, thank you to practitioner Liz Racy. And um, I believe, are the Academy Awards this coming Sunday? No, so, no. no are they not? The end of the month. Are they the end of the month? Oh, okay, because I was gonna say, we are just cheering you on, Liz, for her husband, Paul, is nominated for Best Supporting or Best Actor in a Supporting Role. We can't wait for that. I just can't wait to hear his name called out. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, thank you to all of you out there, and then here in the sanctuary, thank you to Adam for once again making sure we're seen and heard up here, to Doreen for doing all the technical work and making sure I have what I need up here in the pulpit when I forgot to get it from my office, <laughs> to Brenda, who's on camera too, to Blair and Alex, who were here earlier to make sure everything was running smoothly technically, and to our awesome husband and wife team of Sam Krieger and Diane Vincent. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was perfect for this evening. Um, and a couple of announcements. So 
Once again, uh, donations over the phone. We're going to be here for about 15 minutes after service. If you'd like to call 818-762-7566 to make a donation um, with a credit or debit card, nhcrs.org forward slash give is the way to do so online or texting the word give to 818-457-3419. Um, all ways that you can donate as well as, of course, mailing in your checks. Once again, over and over again, you're going to hear it from us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your tithes, for helping us to keep this community going. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook Live, just go to our website, connect to us on Zoom, and we can put you in a one-on-one -on -one breakout room for Prayer with a Practitioner. You can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the church office and option four allows you to leave a message with a prayer request. Uh, option three, if you're just wanting to hear something inspiring and a spiritual mind treatment recorded by one of our practitioners, um, you can do so. That's uh, what we call dial a prayer. Uh, so next week, we will be here, same time, same place, same Zoom links and Facebook link, and my topic will be melting our frozen mind patterns. <laughs> okay. um, I'm sure it will be revealed. Uh, <laughs> grief support group, this group that's facilitated by our wonderful, wonderful practitioner, Carol Winnegar, who's just really skilled uh, the Art of uh, Grief Support. They'll meet at 1 p.m. on Zoom. All are welcome. Our quick start class with Dr. Mark will begin on Sunday, April 18th. It runs for three consecutive Sundays, so the 18th, the 25th, and May 2nd, be from 11.15 till 12.45. And um, this is a required, it's a free class, but it's required if you want to become an official member of the church. So people often don't realize they've been attending for a long time, but they never really signed up to be an official member that has you know, voting privileges at our annual meetings, that can attend and hear more about the business and direction of the church. So uh, if that's of interest to you, and also just to learn the basics of science of mind, um, please sign up for that. It's free, as I said earlier, and you can sign up online. And uh, we'd like you to do so by Thursday the 15th so we have an idea of how many people will be in the class. Our Zoom virtual patio, we come together 20 minutes before our Wednesday and Sunday services, and we stay on for a while afterwards so you can visit together as a community. Please take advantage of that. Men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30. Our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 until 8.15. And for information on all that, to sign up to get our weekly emails um, and um, monthly newsletters via uh, the internet, via email, uh, please, please go to nhcrs.org. Yes. <laughs> With that. Let's come together in prayer one, one more time. So grateful once again for all the ways that we felt the payoff of spirit being present throughout our time together. How we felt its love, its inspiration, its beauty, its goodness. I know that each of us has gained something from this time, something that blesses us, that some awakening has occurred that allows us to step into greater realization and experience of that divine nature at the center of us all. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we've received and how they absolutely continue to multiply and flow out into the universe. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Thanks again for being with us this evening. Let's join together one more time in song. Amen.